Hello and welcome to Kitchen Counter Crafts. If you like this video, would you please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you would, please hit the bell icon for alerts for new videos. Okay, part two to the layered envelope journal. And I'm trying to make this kind of Valentine's pinkish theme. And I decided I'm not really positive. I'm gonna do like the XOXO loves and kisses types of thing. So even though I have that tissue, I'm not really gonna do that. So I'm just gonna try to, I guess, go through this and see what's in my stash and really use that up um, as best as I can. And so where we left off is that I had put some of the sprays onto this and this is where we're at right now. So very plain, some washi tape in here to kind of remind me that this is closed off. So I glued that down and that the envelope is really here and here, you know, that's closed down too. So I can use those areas to um, maybe embellish a lot more there. Then this little flap was just from this Piece and I went ahead and just kind of fortified that and added to it and I don't I may just cut that straight or keep it I don't I have no idea what I'm gonna be doing with this and then this is just where we cut out and I don't know if I'm keeping that either so that's where we're at and while all of this stuff was drying <clears throat> I went ahead and kind of gathered up some paper so this is let me see if I have a bigger piece. No, I don't see a bigger piece. All right, so this is bicycle wrapping paper from the Dollar Tree. And what I did was I grabbed my, my sprays that I've made in another video. And these are glitter sprays, so you can see how pretty that is. And just kind of sprayed this with the gold, goldish, brownish, and then some of the pink so you can see the sheen in that but that is really plain old uh wrapping paper so possibly using this i i, I really like that i think that's going to work well with these colors and then i grabbed just a piece of scrapbook paper that's eight and a half by eleven no real reason i'm just trying to use up these eight by eleven eight and a half by elevens and then I also grabbed a 12 by 12 that I bought as, I don't know, it was like a discounted, so I have a whole bunch of those. And I grabbed a sheet of cardstock paper. So I have this one, I think that'll go well. I think this'll go well. Don't know, it's like crazy, crazy flower. So I don't think all of these are gonna work together and play nice together. Anyway, I just grabbed a bunch of stuff. And so I just thought I would start. Now, um, I do know I want to use the cardstock to make pockets and things like that. So one of the things that I found very, very helpful online is, you know, the, I don't know, I call them like extreme scrapbookers. They're, they make a lot of cards and they make the scrapbook albums, which I don't do. Uh, so they they kind of have this thing called a 12 by 12 i don't know i'll put a link to it there's it's like how to use a 12 by 12 sheet and then they have all these lines on it that i've used in a different video and i of course can't find it so you kind of have to look it up but i don't know if i need to look that up because basically they divided the paper into threes which is you know about four inches uh, four inches and four inches and then they they used those kind of or maybe it was three inches All right, I'm gonna do three because that's four is gonna be way too long for this so then they div divvied up like the three inch piece three three inches by 12 and made a bunch of other stuff so I think I'm gonna just oh sorry uh, I'm, I'm going to play this by ear, you know, big shocker because I'm not measuring again. But I think what I'm going to do is is just go for it and um, use this 
to put in a few things that I think this needs. So one of the things I want is like either a belly band or a pocket. That's way too thin. So maybe that becomes a belly band somewhere else. All right, so let's set that aside. This is too thick for a pocket, probably like Snow, or not Snow White, but Goldilocks. This is too thick, this is too thin. So out of this one though, I'm gonna make um, some pockets for this. So as you can tell, I'm just eyeballing this, but I think that really does go into thirds. All right, so I'm just gonna uh, grab this and cut it. And I, I'm gonna need a couple pockets, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut two out of this. Okay. Those two are gonna be pockets, and I just go like this in the middle of it with my circle punch, and this is a three-quarter circle punch that has seen better days also, but it still works. All right, so there's two pockets, and I do that, I, I punch those out so that I remember what I was gonna do with them, because seriously, it's like short-term memory loss. And I'll cut something and then be sitting here going, what did I want to do with that? No clue. Okay, I'm gonna make this one a little bit thicker. Where are you? There's this one. So I don't know how much that was, like an inch and a half. I could seriously be measuring this, but. All right, there's that these two and then this oh yeah that's much better do I even want that as a flap up on the front I might want that so sometimes like I said before I'll just kind of look at this here and say yeah this looks great and then I you have to fold it anyway to know where to cut but sometimes you can even just leave it like that so that Maybe it becomes a flap or gets tucked into something. I don't I don't know. Or it just gets cut. And sometimes I just never know until I'm until I'm ready to decide. And then somewhere in the middle, this looks good. I'm gonna just put a notch in there as well. And then this is going to be a pocket here. So let me, let me get that. Because um, again, if I don't do that, I'm literally going to forget. Okay, I've got stoppage here. Oh yeah, and a nice bead down here. Okay, and if you didn't watch the prior videos, there's two of them. One, how I picked the envelopes, and then another one, how I started this journal. Um, you will know that this is just a piece of lace kind of folded up on this glue bottle because I've lost that little pin several times now, and the last time it was actually very traumatic because I literally could not find it and I thought I was gonna have to spend like 10 bucks to get another deal with like several different pins and right, my budget couldn't really afford that but anyway I found the pin it had rolled somewhere down and now I have that thing on there so that I don't have to go through that again okay so there's a pocket that I can use and then, don't know what's gonna happen there, but I think on one of, oh, I'm, um, I made a notebook last time. Where is it? It's right here. So this was a little notebook that I stitched together. 
And I, I was gonna, yeah, that's what I was gonna do. I have a piece of elastic. So, story on this piece of elastic. I'm sure many of you were making masks. And so the elastics were pretty easy to come by during that time. And so I still have like this huge roll. Um, and so anyway, you just cut a length and yes, I eyeballed it. And you want it to be fitting snuggish. So um, I'm just literally going to tie it so that it's not too tight, but it's also not too loose. And I'm doing the surgeon's knot, which I explained last time. And there's your bullet journal insert. How easy is that? Anyway, you got your, your journal in here. And so now this, when it runs out, you can just remove it and you're good to go. Now this thing keeps opening, which is super annoying. So I might, just for the meantime, Put a little bit of something around it. Oh, my little tags. They're so cute. I love those little taggies. All right. I'm just gonna, and this is just to keep it closed and kind of out of the way. Oh, dull scissors. And I'm gonna tie it in a bow. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I could have just stuck a rubber band around it, but it's fine. Okay, there's my little my little snug package in there. Okay, so I need something here, and I really do want to use maybe a little bit of decoupaging because I don't really want that here. So, oh yes, that's right. So I also have some book page and some tissue. So let me do that. Okay, so I have some book page out of a trial law book. I'm going to do a video on what books to use and what not to use because I'm gonna tell you, I've had really bad, bad luck on some of this stuff. I thought that I was doing really great and then you start reading what you just picked out and it's quite horrific and so you want to make sure that whatever it is you're using for the book page doesn't cause somebody to question you um, or say did you read this and what kind of messaging are you giving here so anyway just just to be on the safe side read what you've got and this is from the bottom of the trial law book um, with just some, can you see it? There we go. Just some case studies. So that's mild and doesn't have any weird, weird stuff, which, what was I thinking buying a trial law book anyway? But so from larceny and petty theft to, or not petty theft, that wouldn't go to trial, uh, to murder cases, which it's just what I want in a junk journal. Anyway, it was, it was bad. So I might have to do away with that book for some time being, unless I can just use some of the, the bottom pieces. I don't know, we'll see. I, I really, I bought it because the book is old, the pages are old, the uh, coloring is fantastic the typeset and the fonts are just great in it as well and so um it's just a really pretty book but again books can be very very pretty but then golly gee you better make sure you've got the content that you're at least you know being mindful of so Okay, that's what I'm gonna say on that. And uh, so I used a book page and, oh yes, I use tissue from Hobby Lobby. So uh, this stuff is just really, really pretty, adds a very nice dash of color. And I think I'm gonna do a mini journal there. So I have some of this stuff still. Did I put pages together for the mini journal? No, I did not. 
I can do that. Um, I actually put a few things together for filling up the pockets though. So this is a coloring page, gather happy moments, but the back of this coloring page has this really pretty thing in there. And I think it goes very well with what's in the journal. Now I have to find a um, envelope that's gonna fit that. So that's too small, then that means this one's too small. And that means it's not gonna fit in there. Oh, oh, oh no. Guess what I just did? I blocked out this one. Did I? Oh no, I didn't. Ha, just kidding. It's back here. Okay, forgot. So there's a pocket here that I can, you know what, I might want to do that. I'll tuck it in there. And then you can see it through the, hopefully the picture window, right? Can you? No. No, look at that. No, you can't see it. Oh, dang it. Can you see it this side? No, I guess neither one's going to be able to see it. I don't know. That's too far over. Yeah, it's too far. It'll only catch that part. Okay. So, so much for that. Um, hmm. So that means this pocket's not dead either. Because I thought that pocket was dead. It is dead. But on this side, it's not dead. So I should figure out how to remind myself what I'm doing. So sh I'm thinking maybe I should put this in a different spot instead of the middle because I'm going to be blocking out the uh, pockets. Okay, so as you can tell, this is just a trial and error and I'm just crafting what as I go along. If you're looking for like a polished journal video, this is not it. I advise you to go somewhere else because this is just literally a lot of trial and error. Will this go in this way? No. I got ramba. Okay. I'm going to just put it in this way and then I'll put a different picture in there later. All right. What did I just do? I moved the journal from the middle to here. And why did I just do that? It's because this seam is sealed and the journal actually makes way more sense because now I can access the pockets like as if it was a wallet. And then you're gonna be able to see a little bit of page sticking out. And then here you can see the pockets because I've got a notch. So that makes way, way more sense. And this has a notch so you can tell. Okay, I am finally squared away with that. That is fantastic. All right, so another thing I have to put in, oh yeah, I wanna do this, is this um, page that I dyed with inks, uh, fountain pen inks. And so one of the things I really love to do, look at this pretty edge on there. And that's just from putting water in the inks that I'm cleaning out um, from my pen. So I fold this a little bit jaggedy so that you can see there's different layers. I'm gonna show it to you. Okay, so see there's, you can see this and this, they're not completely flush. And there's a reason for that. Um, and then there, this has a tear, which you'll see, I, I don't mind that at all, because then you get to use your washi tape or make something else look really, really pretty to um, add to it. So I think I'm gonna add this here because there's a completely blank, empty page. And or here. I'm gonna add it here. And um, this is gonna fold right open like that. So we will do that. Is it too big? I think it's way too big. So, you know what? I can even cut it right there and that would be fine. Oh, do you wanna cut it or tear it? No, oh, we're gonna tear it. Okay. 
Okay, and on this tear, I can just add a little bit of washi to it. Maybe. Yes. Oh, come on. Does that ever happen to you where your washi's just not behaving? Ugh. Okay, you know what? I might have to go with plan B washi. Oh, come on, look at this. What in the heck? It's just... Ugh, it's just shredded. There, it's kind of tearing all in terrible pieces, but we're gonna, if, I don't wanna be here all day just trying to get my washi to behave, so we're gonna use a tattered, torn piece to put on here. I'm even gonna put the little shredded bit in there just to kind of hold that together. There we go, okay. So there's a tiny bit of washi on the end there to catch whatever happened to the other one. Oh yeah, and I wanted to use this here. Ugh. Okay, um, no, no, it's shredding. It's just, and look at how much is on the air. Ugh, man. There. Am I just being impatient? Yes. Oh, yay. Okay. There we go. Get off of here. So I'm putting some washi here just to kind of let me know that this is the, or whoever gets this. To know that's a flap to open and then we're gonna just glue that right on there as simple as that so you know you can use all different things to color paper and to dye it you can basically make your own paper I I've also used acrylic paints they're very very inexpensive you can just buy like the different brands from Hobby Lobby or Michaels or any craft store. And you can dilute the paints. Well, that's really what this is. It has acrylic paint in there. So you can color paper with that. You can uh, watercolor your paper. That's also very nice. There you go. And um, I can put some stamps on this a little bit later or something like that. So I'm gonna put a little mini book here and then I need some pockets. What happened to my pockets? There they are. Okay, and then I think I'm gonna put double pockets over here, yikes. Right here, so that will be good. And what am I putting in here? I have no clue yet, but I'm sure I'll have some ephemera that I can add there. And um, when I first started this video, I kind of pointed out that I try not to use uh, any print printed stuff like digitals. Not that I'm against them. I just think that uh, sometimes people don't have the printers for it. I just bought a printer, so now I finally have a printer. And that's really where I kind of have sympathy for people who don't have printers who, that don't work or don't behave or the ink is too much. So that's why I'm not using any digitals or try not to use them in a lot of these things. Now, if you have a digital kit, use it because you already purchased it. And so if you have ephemera that goes inside that you can utilize, that is wonderful. So I just put two pockets here and why, I don't know, just because I wanted to. And they're really big pockets. I don't normally go that big, but that's fine. We'll go, we'll go with it. It covers up more surface. Okay, so then I still have 
this thing here. Don't know what I'm gonna do with that yet. Uh, it's not gonna go in here. Um, I could cut it at a diagonal. See if I could do that or even fold it. Oh, this could be my mini book. That'd be good. And then I have this little birdie image up on top, which is not gonna go in this one because it just doesn't it doesn't go in here at all. I mean, like it just doesn't go with the with the vibe of this at all. So I still have all this. Okay, this is gonna be my. I think this is gonna be my book. That noise is my dog drinking water. So just ignore it. All right, so there we go. There's that. And this. And then I still have all those papers that are waiting to be used. Where do I use them? I think. Which one do I use? This goes really well. And why? Because it's picking up some of the lavenders and the blues. So I think I'm gonna use this guy in here, so. I'm not using the whole piece because uh, it, my journal already has quite a bit of bulk in it and it's from this big journal, uh, bullet journal in there, so I, I think the rest of the stuff that I'm going to tuck in here, oh boy, I just busted through my pocket, didn't I? No? Okay, I didn't. Um, rest of the stuff is going to be fairly flat, um, so I'll add some ephemera there. And um, this can go partially inside the, yeah, inside my little mini book. That'll be good. So there's a couple pages for the mini book in here. I'm just gonna tuck those in. And that's, this is how I work. I'll just put stuff off to the side a little bit. And then I have like this page, don't really know what to do with it. It's pinkish. I have this page, don't know what to do with that. And so I have a few things there. Oh yeah, I knew what I was gonna do. Okay, so the, the book's gonna go down here. And then I still have a belly band, which I can't use here. I can use it here though. Do I wanna do this and this? Maybe I do the book there, but I don't want this covered. Okay, so I can put this here. Hmm, don't know. I'm now having issues trying to determine what I wanna do. Okay, so um, this is something that my daughter showed me. It's just a flap, uh, fold open flap. Let me just do this while I'm thinking this through. So you want a perfectly square piece of paper, okay? So how do you get a perfectly square piece of paper? Well, you fold it like this. So this one is not a perfectly square piece of paper yet. So I'm going to go like this and you can just ignore that other fold that's in it. Okay, so that's the first fold really. And then what you're going to do is fold it in half and it's going to be opposite of the way you folded it. What, what does that mean? It's like this. So the print is on this side for the diagonal fold. That means your other folds are gonna have to be opposite of that. So I'm not gonna fold it with the printed side. And then I'm gonna open it and fold it again in half. I'm gonna do it on just another paper that doesn't have that other line. And then you've got these two lines and this just folds neatly in like this. So let me show you on this. It's easier to see it. The first fold is like this in a diagonal then you flip it this way 
and then you flip it this way. So you, you're gonna have to, it's like flip, fold, and fold, and then it kind of makes a, I don't know, you just kind of bring these guys in, and it makes a diag uh, diagonal shape. And then you can actually put the corner in, and it opens up the whole thing like that. Or you can do it this way, and it'll open it up. Actually, I'll probably do it this way. So these two pieces are not the same size. Just realize that, but that's okay. And if I glue them, how are they gonna open? Don't know yet. Is it gonna open like that? I don't want that. I want all this to open this way. So if I glue it, how's that gonna open? No like this. Hmm. Let me think about that. You know what? I might just do it this way where it opens up like that and gives me another pink element. And this one might have to just wait. So I think I might do that. So that's going to go somewhere in here. Totally indecisive tonight. So, um, let's put, you know what? Let me, let me take a look at this again, because I think this has some elements that I want to work with. Okay, so there we go. There's that pocket like this one, so it's right here. Man, that's hard to see. Let me do this real quick. I'll add this to that as well. And there it is. Okay, you got lots and lots of print happening. So I can add two pieces of paper there because I've got like 50 million in here. And then I have little cards and things like that that go in as well. So there's the pocket. And then I have this as a fold out. So there we go, there's that fold out. And then this is going to be the little book. And then there are some pockets that I've got everywhere else. Here's the double pocket page that I just made. So I'm kind of using the same elements, but just changing them up just a tad bit here because of the way that this booklet opens versus the way this one opens. So that hopefully makes some sense. I think what I need is a contrast. I think that's what's happened here, that I have this cardstock, but everything is looking exactly the same. So I'm going to just go and grab another one to contrast. And actually, I think that's gonna have to be part three. So join me in part three, and I'm going to actually go ahead and put this little book together in part three, add a belly band, and then go ahead and get started on some ephemera. So join me for part three when I fill up the book.